أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والثين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والطين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه وثفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين In the previous sermon we dealt with the historical and religious significance of two fruits fig and olive and two places Mount Sinai and Makkah Mentioning of Baladil Amin at the end shows that the spiritual guidance which started with Moses and found perfection at Makkah, the first house built for worship of Allah and was destined to be the living symbol of divine unity. Let's see what Bible and Holy Quran records in this regard. It was revealed to Moses, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. And the Lord said unto me, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. If anyone does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 to 19. And Jesus said to his disciples, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of, of mine, and shall show it unto you. John chapter 14 verse 16 Mount Olive is the place where Prophet Jesus and many other Israelite prophets often repaired for worshipping and preaching. From this we can easily conclude that perhaps Thin and Zaytun were parts of that mountain range which has been prophetically mentioned in Torah as Mount Seir. The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth <coughs> from that paran. And he came with ten thousand saints. From his right hand went forth a fiery law for them. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 It is interesting knowledge that Allah has taken oath on two fruits along with two places only once in the whole of Quran and it's obvious that these two fruits cannot play any role in moral and spiritual development of human beings. So there must be some underlying nutritional, historical or symbolic significance of these two fruits that Allah has taken oath on them in order to authenticate a statement made in the forthcoming verses of the chapter. The principal object for which Allah is taking oath of these four things is that human beings can make enormous spiritual advancements by believing and doing good deeds. There is one other place in Quran where the words blessed olive tree 
have been used as a symbol for divine light of Islam. Allah is the light of heavens and earth. A likeness of his light is as a pillar on which is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. The glass is as it were a brightly shining star lit from a blessed olive tree. It's verse, cha verse 35, chapter 24. In this short verse of Holy Quran, Allah has mentioned important role of divine revelation working for moral and spiritual advancement of human beings. Allah, is take, Allah by taking oath of fig, olive, Mount Sinai and Makkah has provided undeniable historical evidence to vindicate its truth. Previously, we tried to understand what these four things stand for and how they are symbolic representations of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. It is not a speculative interpretation. These four things stand as a symbol for the chain of prophethoods starting from Abraham until Prophet Muhammad and is mentioned in all holy scriptures, Torah, Bible and Quran. This chapter is about guidance revealed through prophets so that faculties granted to human beings could be utilized properly for attaining enormous progress and predominance over other creations. The course of action prescribed here is to believe and do good deeds. It also warns that if human will not follow these instructions, they will gradually face disgrace and degradation. And we have to stand accountable for our actions in front of the best of judges, Allah Almighty. Allah has used the logic of arguing from known to unknown. One can go on putting forward arguments to prove that any act will yield results in time to come. But it might not be so convincing as compared to an established historical fact. For instance, working of the sun, the moon and the rain have been often cited not only in the Quran but also in the previous scriptures. But facts of history somehow seems to be more appealing and convincing than what is generally observed. It is observed in, in any phenomena, works and yields good character over time, then it attains a stamp of authority. Similar is the case with the divine message and those who can conveyed it. Their existence, truth of their message and their life stories are a living history and they continue to influence thousands of millions of people even today. Allah Almighty takes oath on himself approximately seven times in Quran. Allah also takes oath on many of his creations, sun, moon, stars and angels. So why did Allah swear and what is its significance? Scholars believe that the significance of an oath is to authenticate the evidence. In the wisdom of Holy Quran, whenever an oath is presented, it is really a testimony after which supporting evidence is provided. An oath is a sense, in a sense is a spiritual pursuit to exalt the status of object being sworn upon. However, a little thought on divine oaths in Holy Quran reveals the fact that Allah's oath encompasses entire domain of His sovereignty and sets witness to His authority and glory as a creator and lord of universe. In this chapter, Allah's swearing by the fig, olive, Mount Sinai and the city made secure is to assert that a truth mentioned in this chapter about man's capability to rise to the moral and spiritual heights is as true and authentic <coughs> as true and authentic facts for which these symbolic references stand for. The two, two fruits and two cities 
symbolically refer to historical and spiritual history of Israelites and Ishmaelites, of which Judaism, Christianity and Islam form an integral part. Muhammad Asad, a well-known Austrian Muslim scholar, in his commentary has summed up these symbolic references as three historic phases of monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. He writes as, The fig and the olive symbolizes the land in which these trees predominate. The countries bordering on the eastern part of Mediterranean, especially Palestine and Syria. As it was in these lands that most of the Abrahamic prophets mentioned in the Quran lived and preached. These two species of trees may be taken as a measure for religious teachings voiced by the long line of these God-inspired men, culminating in person of the last Judaic prophet Jesus. Mount Sinai, on the other hand, stresses specifically the apostleship of Moses in as much as the religious laws enjoined by him and in its essential binding of, on Jesus as well was revealed to Moses on the mountain of Sinai, Sinai Desert. Finally, the city made secure signifies undoubtedly the city of Makkah where Muhammad wasallam, the last prophet, was born and received his divine call. As verses 1 to 3 of this chapter draw our attention to the fundamental ethical unity underlying the teachings, the genuine teachings of all the three historic phases of monotheistic religions personified by Moses, Jesus and Muhammad Holy Bible also regards fig leaves as standing for good news and peace. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 says and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Similarly, Olive refers to a significant event in the life of Noah as we read and the dove came to and the dove came into him in the evening and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Genesis chapter 18, 8 verse 11. The symbolic and historical references about fig and olive in this chapter refer to some interesting religious and historical background, a universal guidance for enormous progress and human development. Here God has tried to convince every section of society that by following the guidance and action for which Fig, Olive, Mount Sinai and Makkah stand witness, it can bring people of all religions closer in thought and cordial in relationships. May Allah help us understand the true spirits of Islam. Amen. <coughs>
اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحان الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون عباد الله ذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله أعلم ما تسمعون وقيم الصلاه